So uh, several memories. Uh, one, I think the first World Youth Day you go to always holds a special feeling. So Toronto for me was so beautiful. I can remember um, they had the Confession Park, Rotero Park, I believe, was right uh, on the waterway in, in Toronto. And then they did the Stations of the Cross throughout the city uh, with a beautiful performance on the city streets. Uh, that was amazing. I can remember uh, in, in Sydney meeting uh, Syrian Catholics with their flags from, from Lebanon as well. And uh, it was at a time when the U.S. Uh, was active in, in a war in the Middle East. And so to meet other Christians from the Middle East was, it was a great moment of solidarity for us. Um, and of course, when Pope Benedict was the, the new Pope in Germany, in Cologne, to see him sort of return to Germany for the first time and, and to really be uh, seen as, as a, a great father figure by so many of the youth, I think was really very special. I actually received my vocation in Krakow. Uh, I was working as a layman in Poland 20 years ago and uh, felt called to the priesthood. And met the, I'm a Dominican priest now. I met the Dominicans praying at the tomb of St. Uh, Jacek in Poland. And it, 20 years ago, I, I encountered the Divine Mercy in Wagowniki for the first time. And during the time of discernment, uh, understanding those words, Jesus, I trust in you under the image, gave me great confidence to pursue uh, a path of freedom that God was calling me to that, uh, that I was very afraid to embrace. So absolutely, uh, for me to say, Jesus, I trust in you, I, I say it every day. I, I love praying the chaplet and it's, it's what's given my life meaning. I think um, one of the beauties of the genius behind World Youth Day, right, was that um, when John Paul II as Karol Wojtyla, was first a priest and then bishop, we know that he would often go hiking in the mountains, camping and canoeing. And it was because, as we know, that the, the authorities would not allow him to meet openly with young people. And so he could, he did so in the mountains. Uh, and the young people uh, described what they said they were more closer, they were more themselves when they were with him hiking and camping and canoeing and speaking about what was most close to them than at any other moment of their lives. And I, I think the genius behind uh, the Polish pastoral understanding, as typified by John Paul II, was that he created a, a sphere or a zone of freedom there in the mountains or, or on a retreat. And I think that's what the World Youth Day is attempt to do, that it brings together young people from around the world who also have that same experience that maybe your parents remember in 1979 when John Paul II first came to, to Poland. And all those people turned out and they've, they've said it was the first time that they could actually count themselves and say that there are more of us than there are of our oppressors. And I think the World Youth Day does that for the young people that come. It certainly did that for me, to be able to look around and see uh, the many thousands and, and millions of uh, young Catholics and, and others seeking the truth, seeking to, to live a life of virtue, and saying that um, it is possible to live this way. So since uh, Sydney, the World Youth Day, the Knights of Columbus have been asked, uh, both in Sydney and in Madrid, to help run uh, one of the English language catechetical sites and youth festival sites. And in Madrid, we ran the uh, Palacio de Portes with uh, other groups from America. And uh, there was a, a basketball stadium where we saw over 100,000 pilgrims. So we ran the catechesis in the morning, and then we had different cultural and faith programs in the afternoon and also in the evenings of the youth festivals. And so in Krakow, uh, Cardinal Jeevish has also asked us to do something similar, where we will run the, uh, the large uh, international English language center uh, for pilgrims. How many people will come to World Youth Days from uh, your country, from the United States? I believe there's about 30,000 estimated uh, Americans to, to come from the United States to, to Poland for World Youth Day. And how they are preparing to, to this event? So many of them are working with their, uh, their own young adult leaders and their campus ministers. Uh, many are also uh, reading about the life of St. John Paul II and St. Faustina and uh, just discovering uh, also the, the Polish church and the great history of the saints of Poland. Uh, you also probably know that um, the two miracles connected to St. Faustina were performed on Americans, actually. So one was Maureen Diagon, who's still alive, 
and it was her miracle, her healing, that brought about the beatification of St. Faustina. And for the canonization, it was a priest who had a, a heart condition, uh, and his heart was completely healed. And so um, I think for many Americans, they, they know about the Divine Mercy and uh, feel very close to it as, as a new popular devotion. And the John Paul II for you? Who is the John Paul II in your life? I had the uh, experience after college. I was born in the United States, but I'm uh, Polacky and Pozynia. And I returned and I, I had my first job was actually in Warsaw. And uh, it was in 1994. And John Paul II was still the Pope. It was the 50th anniversary of the Warsaw Uprising and then of the end of World War II. And I remember reading uh, something that he said that when he was a young man living under the Nazi oppression, he said that the best people of my generation, the men and women that I would look up to, he said they were already killed or they were already sent to the prison or to the death camps. And he had to ask himself the question, what about me? What am I called to do? And I would say the same thing happened when I was living in Warsaw, living in the old Jewish ghetto and asking those same questions about my life. And so he provided certainly for me and my vocation uh, an example and a model. Uh, I've come to, to, to read certainly many of his writings and even worked at the, uh, the National Shrine of St. John Paul II in Washington, D.C. So he's become a, a personal patron of mine as well. And I think it's, it's our duty to say that um, every generation will be a, a JP2 generation and, and to pass on his teachings and to really help young people explore uh, what made um, his following of Christ in obedience uh, so humble and beautiful and uh, I think he gives a great witness to this. And please invite the young people to our Lord of Days from all over the world. In 1995, I discovered my own vocation uh, to become a Dominican brother in Krakow, praying at the tomb of St. Hyacinth. And John Paul II, uh, almost 50 years earlier, discovered his vocation, first as a student uh, and then a seminarian, uh, on these same streets of Krakow. So I invite you to come uh, discover the City of Saints, discover what uh, made John Paul II great and from where the message of Divine Mercy uh, began and sprung on the beautiful streets of Krakow, where, as George Weigel said, the 20th century uh, had its real meaning. Come to Krakow. It's not too late to plan your trip. Uh, we're waiting for you at the English Language International site. We're preparing a, a great few days for you to be with us. Uh, and I invite you to come, uh, Zaprashami, to Krakow.